Hello, I'm Craig McLean and welcome to episode 2 of the Mini Twin Cam 16 Valve Improvements. In this episode, we're mainly going to focus on the turbo oil drain improvements. So I'll let you see how it was before, the mess it was, how I was so very unhappy with it, and then we'll uh, move on to some other things that need improved in the next episode. So let's crack on with them turbo oil drain improvements. Right guys, that's the engine out. I still think it looks absolutely bloody fantastic, considering in February 2023, it'll have been in the car seven years. Fair enough, in that time, it probably hasn't done all that many miles, maybe three or 4,000. Um, it hasn't done anything for the last 18 months at least, maybe two years actually, with COVID kicked in, all the shows got knocked on the head, I got busy with the Escort, and this kind of got neglected, which is the reason why I'm getting back onto it now. But yeah, I still really do think that looks absolutely amazing. It does need a bit of a clean up, which I'm gonna do while it's out. But obviously that's not the real reason I've took it out. I'll spin it round now and I'll explain exactly the reasons why I'm pulling it out because it's just a big area I'm so very unhappy with. Just a bit of a view from the back of the engine. This is the manifold that was built by Fusion Fabrications. Absolute beautiful bit of work that is i did have a go making my own manifold and it was an absolute fail i was completely unhappy with it and then i found out about fusion fabrications producing these they didn't even need any any details from me other than what turbo was fitting which is the gt17 from the saab which was at the time highly recommended on all the uh, the mini forums for the twin cam or for the mini application because they're a much smaller uh, less laggy turbo than the old big the old and bigger t3 um i don't know a hell of a lot about turbos etc but uh i know enough obviously to put them together that's all i can say um so yeah manifold was built by fusion fabrications saab gt17 garrett turbo that was a brand new turbo because the original one i bought which was um i think it was a copy of the garrett and it basically poured oil down the exhaust and basically blew smoke out the back end, big style. So I ended up buying a proper uh, Garrett brand new turbo and this has been touch wood, fantastic. So let me get down underneath and show you the big issue as to why I've pulled this engine out. So what we're looking at here is the place where the original mini fuel pump would have mounted on the back of the block. And this collector here, which takes all the oil drains from the K head, because as I mentioned earlier, the K head returns its oil externally. This little collector was designed to be mounted here, where the original fuel pump was. But due to the turbo hanging down, it meant that all these pipe outlets would foul the bottom of the turbo. You wouldn't be able to get the pipes on. So that was the reason why I had to make this simple elbow with two flanges on, to mount it over here, out the way. I do need to reroute this pipe, I'm not happy with that either. That will be sorted before it goes back in. The issue there is, the turbo also requires an oil drain. And at the time, I did this abortion, I'll be honest, I'm completely unhappy with it. This little section welded off the side of that elbow and a very short pipe, which is all puckered up as you can see. I've been keeping an eye on this for a while because I've been expecting this failing. Uh, I've never, ever been happy with it. That that piece of hose there is probably only maybe an inch, inch and a half long. It's horrendous. I'm completely unhappy with that. So this is going to be getting removed. This section here is going to be getting removed. That's going to be getting put back to a nice elbow, as it should be. That will be remaining where it is, out, over there, out the way, because the elbow was nicely made i think i, I think i silver I've got all these silver soldered so it was all beautifully put together uh that was that was spot on not i've got no issue with that but this here is an abortion now my lack of knowledge with turbos has led to this being the way it is because i knew that the compressor housing here could be spun round you simply loosen these bolts all the way around and you can spin the compressor housing on the turbo so this pipe can come out anywhere you want. But what I failed to realize is you can also loosen these bolts and spin the center section round. 
I don't know how I've missed that at the time or I haven't realized. And there's the oil feed coming in at the top and the drain at the bottom, but it's not perfectly straight. So basically that should be perfectly straight. The oil should be right in at the top, drain out the bottom. So when I spin that section round, it then means that the drain is going to be further out over here. So I'm going to simply put a nice fitting, a round fitting into the side of this elbow and a simple 90 degree elbow, a bit like the original T3 turbo was on the Metro Turbo. It'll be a nice simple elbow, which allows for flexibility in the manifolds and turbo moving. It'll look so, so much better. I did say I was going to be re-drilling the block. The original plan was I was going to drill into the block somewhere and put a fitting in to go to the turbo or worst case, the gearbox and put a fitting in. But when we had a look at it on Friday, my mate Anthony correctly pointed out that this centre section can be spun round, meaning it gives me more freedom and more room to put a nice elbow in here uh, to make a much, much neater and better job of it. That's what I'm going to be starting to get onto today. I'm going to, I'm going to take all this off and take it to bits, dress all this abortion off, clean it all up nicely, put a nice fitting in it, and then I'll order an elbow up. When, you, when I get it done, I'll obviously show you a bit of footage and you'll see... The, the difference it's going to make, it'll be far, far superior to that, that pile of crap there. I never was happy with it, and to be honest, I never should have lived with it. I should have, I should have redesigned it. But at the time, the engine was in the car, and doing all this was very, very difficult, let me tell you. I had an absolute nightmare making this work with it in the car. I should have done, like I've done it here, mocked up out of the car. And then obviously we've got these hoses here which are for the feed and return on the coolant for the turbo. I also had these little uh, inline connectors made. I did the drawing, I did all the dimensions, and they basically go in line with the coolant hoses for, for your heater. And uh, it, it does seem to work really well. We did put a, an infrared uh, thermostat on it many years ago, and we were finding that the temperature difference between the two hoses was, was massive. So I'm, I'm happy with that bit. So yeah. Let's get this ripped apart and start looking at doing it properly because, like I say, I've never, ever been happy with it. But when it goes back in, I guarantee it'll be a damn sight better than what you see now. Just another little bit of detail while it's out. They are the Specialist Components billet throttle bodies. Cost a pretty penny a few years ago. And obviously the plenum chamber on the front. Absolutely stunning, stunning parts that Specialist Components make. I really can't, I can't, I really can't say enough about the quality of their parts. It's outstanding. I mean, you do pay for it, but you do get for, you do get what you pay for. So yeah, it's, it is a stunning setup and I really do need to appreciate it more and get it uh, back to where it should be. I think it's also got, I think they're 250 CC injectors, if I remember rightly. So yeah, we're all set up to produce good power, but we just need to go the extra mile now and make sure everything's right and uh, let's get this producing what it should have produced seven years ago right so here we are with the parts and bits i've just been showing you so you can get a better look at it this original elbow was really nicely made and um, the all like i say the flanges were all silver soldered on it was it was beautifully put together and it looked fantastic until i had to add on this mess which is now going to be getting removed. But if there was ever, ever, ever any evidence to prove that I was right to take the car apart, this is it. So this is the pipe that's puckered up over time. That was perfectly straight when I fitted it. And if you look inside, you'll see how it's closing in. It's probably only half of that pipe now um, flowing. The other half's restricted. And eventually that pipe would fail. And now, now that was a piece of oil um reinforced oil hose so it's it's a proper proper hose for the job but it's uh it's just not withstanded the heat and the pressures of the turbo moving etc so yeah i'm so so pleased i've pulled the engine out and i'm sorting this out because this is the one area on this car that's always been in my mind from the very start when i built it it's not been good enough and been a concern that one day it would fail so now it's coming to bits and it's getting done properly the way I should have done it the first time. Right, just a little bit of an update today. 
the centre section of the turbo has now been rotated clockwise to now bring the oil feed and return at the bottom in a perfect vertical line. So now the oil comes in the top and drains straight through. And because we've moved it back, because we've moved it clockwise, it's now brought the return further towards the camera, meaning I've got room to get an elbow in. So the original elbow, as you can see, I've dressed back that horrible um, contraption you've seen earlier. I've welded the hole up and now it's just waiting a fitting to go into the side of that elbow. I'm going to get a horse barb fitting. I think it's about 16, 17 mil. Uh, that's just a bit of rubber hose just to mock up, just to give you an idea. I'm going to be getting a silicon 90 and it'll be cut to the exact right length so it doesn't hang down at the bottom. And that's how it will be. So the, you know, the, the return, the oil return from the turbo is going to be so, so much neater than it was with that horrible contraption. And I'm so pleased to see the back of. But obviously I'll keep you updated and I'll show you some uh, some updates to this. As soon as I get uh, the parts through, uh, there's another couple of things to do. I think it's this side bush on the drive shaft needs the bronze bush replaced as well. There's a little bit of play in the pot joint, so I'll do that while it's out. I may as well put a new rubber seal in the end while it's out. Um, the bracket for the actuator is going to be getting redesigned and actually welded onto the housing of the turbo. Again, I'll keep you updated with that before the, uh, before the end of this project. I think I'm going to call it Project Pottery, because all I seem to do is potter away a few hours here and there. <laughs> but it'll get there slowly. At the end of the day, there's no rush. It's, uh, it's only the start of winter, and I've got months to get all this done. So I'm just going to take my time and in there, do it when I can be bothered, really. Right. Just a couple of parts come to allow me to progress with the build. Or with the improvements, rather. First one being this. This is the elbow, which is going to replace that awful setup you've seen earlier. Now, it's very important that you don't restrict your return on your turbo. Hence the reason why I've went for such a big uh, pipe insert, which will be getting welded into that elbow. I'll show you soon. That's obviously stretched the uh, silicon hose a, lot, a little bit, obviously, to make sure that the internal hose size is at least bigger than the, uh, than the size of the hole within the turbo housing so that the oil flow has a perfect and clear path back to the sump. We've got the gasket for the side cover, the seal and the bush, because obviously once I take it off, I'm gonna have to knock that seal out, so I'll put a new one in, new gasket to put it back together with, new bronze bush, which apparently does need reamed. The last one I did didn't need reamed. I'm hoping I'm gonna get away with it, but if not, I'll figure that out when I get to that point. But yeah, that's a couple of jobs I'm gonna get on with today. And then, uh, yeah, that's a big step forward, I think. And there we go. That's that fitting. Fully mid welded in. It's times like these where I wish I had perfected my TIG welding skills because this would have been beautifully TIG welded. But as of now, I wouldn't do that with the TIG as I wouldn't. It wouldn't look as like it does now, anyways. It would look a damn sight worse than. Then it does migged, but it would be neater if it was tigged. So yeah, that's that's that fully uh, fully dressed in from the inside as well. I've made sure it flows nicely, follows the angle of the pipe, so there's no restrictions. So yeah, get that powder coat now and fit it properly, and that will make such a better job than it was before. And there. Here's a view, quite difficult to record actually, but a view of how it looks with the elbow fitted a million times better. I'll try and get a better shot for you. A million times better than it ever did with that horrible contraption on and it's nice and flowing. And because it's got an angle, because it's got an elbow, there's obviously room in that elbow for flexibility for any movement in the turbo or the manifold, obviously, which is miles better. I'm so much happier with that. Just needs a bit of a dress up, bit of a clean up. And then that elbow is going for powder coat probably tomorrow. Uh, and then that's one part I can bolt back together and forget about. And there we are, all powder coated. Looks absolutely spot on. And massive thanks to CD Cortons. Again, 
for another fantastic service they did this for me uh, in no space of time at all and not only that when i went to see Dwayne from cd cortons he wouldn't even take anything for it he said no you've had a lot of work done through us and you'll no doubt be back again so he didn't want anything thanks very very much to the guys at cd cortons this is now ready to get fitted so i'll show you once it's finally bolted up i've gave it a good thorough clean out because obviously we've been welding we've been grinding and it's been blasted and powder coated i've cleaned the faces up so they're absolutely mint again but now that's uh, ready to bolt back on and that's going to look so so much better than it ever did and just a shot with the little collector bolted on to show you exactly how that fits so that's the main return from the head that comes from the side case on the head down to this collector one of them is a breather and the other two are the returns from the head in the back the two pipes i'll show you shortly they return to them too so yeah that's how that works nice little made part that by special components that's why i wanted to retain it uh, hence why i made this quite a few years ago uh, only now i've improved it and there we are we'll probably do with some slightly smaller jubilee clips i'm probably going to change them but you get the idea anyways it uh flows nicely i'll try and get the best shot as i can the elbow is a bit of a pain to get on to be fair but once it's on it's a hundred 200 times better than it ever was before so i'm calling that the success right one of the last little things to do before the engine goes back in is refitting this drive shaft output uh, cover which has now got a new bronze bushing which i've had to ream it took me over an hour to ream it because i didn't exactly have the right item for reaming it but i may do and it's now a beautiful fit onto the pot joint uh, there's no movement at all it, it spins freely on the joint but there's no um there's no play in the joint at all it's how it should be new gasket a little bit of sealer that's a genuine gasket as well so i'll get that uh, bolted on and then at least we'll have two pot joints that have got no play because what we ended up with was the passenger side one was free of any play and the driver's side one i could wobble the pot joint i've been able to wobble it for a while so while it's out why not sort this little issue out which is exactly what i've done here so i'll get this bolted back on right now right that's the drive uh, shaft output done refitted so that's that taken care of the turbo oil drain has been taken care of all as you've just seen so what's left to do before it can go back in we've still got a couple of items to take care of one of them being the way the actuator mounts onto the turbo because as you can see the brackets around there and the arms are here and i had a bracket that came round and forward which was never really good enough Denzel agrees now, he's giving it the sniff of uh, disapproval. Um, I'm going to replace the hoses that go from the head down to the collector with new hoses. Uh, and I'm also going to, as well, while it's out, it makes complete sense to do the cam belt. Because cars have anywhere between 5 and 10 years cam belt intervals, depending on what car model you look at. This one's been on around about 7. So while the engine's out... Why not put a new cam belt on? It just makes sense. It's easy to do while it's out. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to re-time uh, re it. The timing issue, I think I've mentioned earlier in the video, has been an issue from the start. It's never been quite right. We're going to rectify that. I'll go into that later in either this video or the next one. But yeah, that's just a couple of things that I need to do. Along with a full clean down, the full engine needs a thorough clean, as you can see. Look at the state of that fan. Under the bonnet needs a thorough clean. And then we can hopefully get this lifted in very shortly. So yeah, we're getting there. Underneath, we've got some new Jubilee clips fitted to the hose, to the uh, to the elbow. They're the correct size now, just looks so much better. So yeah, we're slowly getting there. We're slowly ticking items off our list. Well, guys, I'm going to leave that episode here. I'm sure you'll agree that that's a massive improvement on how it was before. I've done a bit of research around the silicon hoes on the 90 to make sure that they are um, you know, capable of withstanding oil and it would seem that 
they definitely are and to be honest the original metro turbo had a silicon 90 so yeah I'm, I'm i'm fairly confident that that should be fine so yeah you want to see watching. some more improvements the next one we're probably going to mainly focus on the turbo actuator bracketry and how we're going to improve that but we'll uh, we'll pick up with that video very very shortly it won't be far away because i've pretty much got all the footage together already so thanks very much for watching again guys and i'll see you very shortly